Welcome to a ship tour of the Norwegian Sky. The Sky, built in 1999 and refurbished in 2019, is sister to the Sun, with a guest capacity of 2004 at double occupancy. Those are the only two ships of that class. While the two ships are quite similar, there are some differences, one of which I will point out later that's kind of a big deal. This is a view of the atrium area that goes from deck 11 all the way down to deck 5. It's one of the unique features of the sky and sun along with the glass elevators reminiscent of ships built more than 20 years ago. There is something to be said about the simplicity of older, smaller cruise ships, albeit a completely different vibe from the mega ships of today. We will start at the bottom and work our way up, starting with deck 5 aft. There is a ship model available for viewing on each NCL ship, and this one is located right outside the Crossings restaurant, one of two of the main dining rooms. Main dining rooms are included with your cruise fare and offer identical menus in both, which changes daily. Le Bistro, the French specialty restaurant, is located right across the way. Also on deck five is the Cruise Next office, where you can purchase buy one, get one free cruise deposits for future cruises. This is something you can only do while on board. So don't forget if you're interested in future cruises with NCL. Around the corner is guest services, the shore excursion desk, and restaurant reservations, along with the main entrance for the Palace restaurant. The Stardust Theater lower level is at the very aft of Deck 6. I will show you from the balcony view when we get to Deck 7. Walking mid, you will find the Photo Center. All photos taken throughout your cruise will be available for viewing and purchase along with accessories and equipment. Halfway through, you will find the library and game room. Just on the other side of the photo center, you will find Sugar King, Mojito Bar, and then the Bliss Ultra Lounge. As we approach the atrium area, around the corner, you will see the internet cafe that continues to shrink, considering nobody really uses those computers. However, something to keep in mind is they will have an internet specialist there to answer any of your questions and give you help with connecting to your Wi-Fi package, which can be very necessary at times. Then you will see some of the fancy watch and jewelry shops. Just outside of there is seating where you can sit down and admire your purchases. Starting in the very front of Deck 7, in an inconspicuous location, down from guest rooms, you will find the Splash Academy Kids Club and Arcade.
On deck seven in the atrium, ironically, you will find the atrium bar. Just around the corner is the art gallery and the entrance to the casino. On the other side of the casino, you can get your caffeine fix at Starbucks. This is an actual Starbucks restaurant, so you can use your app and points for purchases. Then you will find the less fancy shops for souvenirs, gifts, and duty-free items. And at the very back of deck seven is the top of the Stardust Theater. Since there are all guest rooms from decks 8 to 10, we will head up to deck 11, starting at the very front in one of my favorite places on both the sun and the sky, Spinnaker's Observation Lounge. It's a favorite due to the 180 degree views along with a bar that is rarely busy and a quiet relaxing atmosphere during the day. They put a table out for breakfast with pastries, coffee, and tea if you're looking for something light and prefer to avoid the busy buffet. Sometimes it's closed for private gatherings and I do think this would be a wonderful venue for a wedding. We enjoyed watching Sail Away from here because we were in the hot Caribbean sun all day and appreciated the temperature controlled atmosphere and chill vibe. Down the hall, you will find the Mondera Spa and Pulse Fitness Center. Outside on the pool deck, there are two pools with four hot tubs in between. All were quite busy, so we only spent time there on a port day. On the left, you can see the basketball court one deck up. Now we're heading towards the very popular and always busy Topsiders Pool Bar. Now we will head inside to La Cucina, the specialty Italian restaurant that also doubles as a popular pizza buffet for lunch. I would definitely recommend it over the buffet.
As we head out of La Casina, we will pass the Entourage Teen Club, which oddly is located nowhere near the Splash Academy Kids Club. And then another NCL hotspot that actually ended up being a disappointment, the local. It's an included dining option and bar with great views. However, on the sky, they were only serving food at dinner. Across from the entrance of the local is the entrance to the buffet. The buffet area on both the sun and sky were the smallest we've seen on any NCL ship, so we avoided it except for a late night snack. On the very back of deck 10 is my absolute favorite spot on the sky, the great outdoors. On this cruise, we used it as our personal balcony since we booked an inside room this time. Check out my video on how that worked out. This expansive space has enough seating for everyone interested with the best views of the ship. Just upstairs on deck 12, you'll find additional seating and a door that leads to Cagney's Specialty Steakhouse. Cagney's is probably the most popular specialty restaurant on NCL ships. The food was great, but something I need to note that is different from the sun is there are two less specialty restaurants. They don't have teppanyaki or moderno, so everyone with free at sea and specialty meals to book have less reservation options. This may be why the restaurant filled quickly and they rushed us through the meal, which definitely took away from the experience. Across from Cagney's is the Pinnacle Lounge and Sushi Bar. I've found on every ship there are hidden gems if you're looking for a spot to avoid the crowds. The most people we've seen in this lounge at one time was three. So take advantage if you're looking for some downtime. 